What is going on, everyone? I interrupt this broadcast to bring you a special announcement. Spawning in the top left of the map in the blue color, playing as Ra, is everyone's favorite Asian mythology daddy, Corono JJ. I say everyone's favorite Asian mythology daddy, not because Chrono JJ is a daddy, but because Chrono JJ literally birthed every one of us with his ridiculous good looks and uh, very, very witty humor. So just in case you were unaware of how things go. Uh, his opponent today in the red color. Uh, I actually don't know how good looking this man is because on his YouTube channel, he doesn't show his face. So maybe if uh, this this video gets uh, enough attention, we might be able to get a big old uh, shout out for Mr. Albert Wesker, Mr. Thomas Shelby, Mr. Orichalcos, I think is it what it's called. I'm probably mispronouncing that or misremembering it, but he does have a YouTube channel himself. So we do have technically the battle of the YouTubers here, ladies and gentlemen, which is very exciting stuff indeed. Albert Wesker is actually known to be a Loki player. So actually deciding to go in on this first game with the Uranos, kind of showing a little bit of metagaming here. For those of you not really knowing what metagaming is, that is bringing in outside information to decide on what strategy you should go for. And the outside information that Albert Wesker is privy to is that Chrono JJ is likely to pick Ra. Now, the most, uh, similarly, most devastating thing here, I was, I was going to say it before clicking it, but I wanted to make sure, is that Chrono has missed his elephant. Uh, one must always scout their base with their cows. Now, Chrono JJ has missed his elephant, but as is. So anyways, back to the first point was that Mr. Mr. Wesker realizes that Loki versus Ra is a very difficult matchup. It is one of the hardest matchups in the game. Whereas Uranus versus Loki, well, that's a different story. Sorry, Uranus versus Ra, that's a different story. Uranus versus Ra is one of the easiest matchups in the game. Not necessarily to win, but to execute the strategy. And that strategy is fairly simple. It's flood units, kill your opponent. Uh, whereas Loki is, I don't even know. So we'll see how this game's going to go. Corona JJ has been uh, super unlucky as this game started. Not only does he have a relatively forward gold mine, but his elephant out of line of sight. He hasn't, he has spotted these elephant, I think, but maybe not. He is Ra. Ra is one of the weak gods, I would say on competitive mega random due to the fact that uh, he can't scout. So he doesn't know what sort of map he's going to get. So you might get lucky and roll a perfect raw map with low hunt, like Oasis style. You might get unlucky and roll a marsh style map, etc., etc. You don't know the map layout until a heroic age. You don't know how many gold mines are on the map. You don't know where your town centers are. Could be too far town center spawns. All of this stuff could be true. But right now, Chrono is... Uh, rolling with the punches, throwing up his temple, going to be blocking this location in, trying to make it so that his opponent, Albert Wesker, can't get in and harass this gold mine. However, there is an issue right here in that this forest is in range, or, or if you chuck Termer in here, it is in range to harass this gold mine. So we'll see if Albert Wesker is going to notice this one here uh, as, the, as the elephant is gone, Prometheus is on the way, and Chrono, if he goes one town center here, there's not really a rush to get to the classical age. This is kind of a little known fact. It's, it's kind of a dead art of the one town center gameplay uh, because there's kind of three strategies you can do. There's more, but there's three basic ideas you can do in age mythology. So I'll tell you exactly what's going on here as we decide, as Chrono JJ deletes his mining camp that was poorly placed here. So strategy number one is some form of a rush. 
which is you want to advance the classic ledge as fast as you can and start building units to put pressure on to your opponent. Strategy two is rushing a second town center, which is exactly the same, except you are wanting to get a town center as fast as you can. Strategy three is some form of fast heroic. Those are the three basic strategies you can do in Age of Mythology. And the, the, the dirty secret is if you go for the third strategy, the fast heroic off of one town center, you don't need a second town center. That's just the way it is. You don't, so you don't need to advance fast. You can just go later, get more villages, get a, a stronger heroic age timing because you get the villages out a little bit earlier. Uh, and now we see Chrono JJ being very, very risky here. This is against Uranus. He's already advanced. The units are going to be coming forward. Wesk is in the middle of the map eating these water buffalo. He's already got himself double counter barracks down. This is exactly the strategy to do against the 430 uh, fast, uh, 430 kind of raw strategy. You can move in and sack those uh, those terma or whatever, but Chrono is going for this town center. This would never normally get up, but I feel like Wesker just hasn't got his eyes on it. He's got his Oracle over here and it's missing this town center by a big a big margin here. As Chrono's over here, throwing his granary up, gonna try and get onto these elephants as well. The term are only now coming forward. And honestly, Chrono's gonna be happy about this. He gets his town center up. Uh, he does have to f get himself, does he have, already have Shadoof? I don't even know. He's getting himself skin of the Rhino really early here. Which, I mean, I kind of like. I mean, it, he does lose out a lot of villages to do this, but he's going for it as he's onto this hunt over here as well. As the Promethean spots this, and and Chrono is like, "Yep, let me get onto the hunt." Is he getting himself hunting dogs? No hunting dogs. This is one of those weird ones where it's like he doesn't start hunting until the classic age. So, like a six-minute hunting dogs makes no sense, but. It makes a lot of sense <laughs> in this situation. Uh, so we'll see if Chrono is going to think to grab that one. As a Promethean wanders forward here yet again, gets pushed back as Wesker is just trying to see what's going on here. Wesker is scouting. His, his, his uh, Oracle has been pushed back or has been moved back. The term are going to be swinging around the back here to try and hit these villages. That's going to be a, a scary thing for Chrono JJ to deal with. Now, Chrono does have this elephant in his main base, so he can bring these villagers back here and shoot this elephant nice and close to the town center and try and pick it off there when the when the units swing around. He does have his wadget here as well. So we'll see the Terma immediately going after the ferry here. Chrono going to be making a retreat as best as he can as the Wadget wandering forward to try and take this one down. One hero Terma here is a little bit scary as the Pharaoh going to be... Oh, nice shifting sands here from Chrono JJ using some of those cheeky tricks that the players have learned through these years. I love this. Look at how little amount... This is beautiful. Look at how little amount of resources Chrono JJ has spent on making a box. I can't stress how beautiful... This is the only problem with this one has been that uh, seems like the watchtower here is uh, it just hasn't placed the house as well enough to make this box perfect. Uh, but point is, he's built one little wall and one wall segment, used his houses in his temple to make a box. This is, we could call it the chrono box. The chrono box. I love it. I absolutely love it. The slinger going to come out, going to help take these units down. The wadget going to come in to clean up the rest. Good job here. Not going to lose any more units. And Chrono's actually managed to make this early game here for Ra seem very, very strong. He's done a great job with it. He still has his, uh, he still has his skin of the rhino out as well as the term are going to make their way back in here. Chrono can easily just turn around and start targeting these down, but he does lose his pharaoh there. Nice job from Wesker, able to take that one out. And while this is going on, we are seeing a town center coming up. Yet again, another Atlantean player deciding to go double citizen on that town center as we do see a big shockwave getting thrown in. Going to see one laborer getting taken out as Chrono does decide to split his villagers up there's one very low villager over here is the slinger and priest coming to say hi but one villager does go down as Krona has to get back into his base does he have shadoof yet yes he does he can start thinking about farming uh but i feel like he does want to stay on these uh on these hunts over here oh he does have hunting dogs did i miss that or did he 
Did I miss that? Did he have hunting dogs way back when? Someone, someone tell me. W wind, the, wind the video back. Is Chrono JJ a genius? When did he research hunting dogs? That's what I want to know. Anyways. Chrono can throw up farms now if he chooses, but the problem is going to be second gold mine. He's only got a thousand gold left. If he does throw down farms, let's say he builds, I mean, they are only, what, 47 gold. So let's say he builds 10 farms. That's 500 gold-ish. And that's 500 gold he has left in his gold mine. He needs to spend the gold he has on a heroic age, which means he only has 500 gold for his Migdol. He doesn't have any gold for army if he spends, like, just 10 farms. So we'll see how this is going to go as the Terma returning back in onto this position here. Villagers retreating back into the town center here as Chrono can now click up to the next age if he so chooses. I would not be surprised. I'll be surprised if we don't see Sekhmet here. And Sekhmet. I'm in shock. I'm in awe. This is this is Chrono JJ absolutely reformed. I'm it's it's Hathor. I've it's not I'm losing it. I don't believe I don't believe that this is possible. Wesker now gonna be moving in with his uh Terma, spotting this gold mine over here. There is a very easy way to drop the Migdol Stronghold over here uh, and kind of defend this gold mine. And you might have to throw two up, but it is what it is. They're just all jumping over onto gold now. Hathor being the god of choice. I mean, what Hathor does is it does allow your opponent to go for a very easy Hecate. Whereas the idea of with Sekhmet is you get the extra population. You get the defenses. We are seeing these slingers wandering forward to try and take out the uh, the term here nicely. Good job with those slingers utilizing the town center to garrison them in and out to defend here. But Wesker's got a ton of terma, and the strategy here for Wesker is fairly fairly uh, straightforward. He needs to get his third town center, get Mythic Age. Throw the Promethean, uh, sorry, throw the Tartarian Gate down. Do all of the good strong things that he needs to do. Prevent this gold mine from being grabbed. We do have the gold mine on the back here that Chrono can throw up a Migdol or two on as well. Uh, but in essence here, Wesker's, Wesker's uh, job here is pretty simple. Chrono JJ's defense is the tough part. He has to like defend all of this stuff, make sure he gets the gold mine, doesn't lose too many villages, gets his economy sorted out. He does have his rock over here. The Batsukos getting picked off immediately here. Chrono JJ is going to be shaking his head, losing both of his myth units here as well as the army is going to be wandering down here. We see the Migdal Stronghold getting shot up as the Slingers wandering forward here going to be getting greeted by the... Uh, by the Mamillo on this location here as the rock does pick up those slingers going to be bringing him back home as the Migdal stronghold does come up now the question here is will Wesker go for this or not he can stack everything onto this location get a lot of villager kills Grono did invest in the skin of the rhino technology oh, I love this uh, empowerment here from Chrono JJ that's gonna really scare those villagers away you see those arrows just flying out of the Migdal for those who don't know the Pharaoh, if he's empowering a building that does damage, that shoots arrows, will double the, the, the arrows that are shot. So effectively gives 100% bonus damage onto those buildings. Though some of the arrows do miss. So it's not exactly 100%, but point stands. Double the arrows, double the damage. As now Wesker's going to be waiting, but he is clicked up Thayer here. So he's definitely, um, he might be going two town center start, uh, two town center to the mythic yeah. gauge as a while uh, uh, maybe we'll see anyways a whole bunch of military barracks coming down now for wesker the question is does he go for a heroic age timing or does he go for a mythic normally the two town center means a heroic timing the three town center means a mythic timing but it's no reason why you have to do one or the other um so we'll see what he's going to choose here he's going for the town center now so this to me looks like he's probably just going to throw down a market and sell some of that wooden go mythic age here. Makes a lot of sense. Whereas what Krona JJ is going to want to do is maybe hold on to his reign until he sees the Promethe uh, sees the the Hecate. I keep on saying Prometheus. Sees the Hecate, and if he if he does that, he can cast rain, block it for a minute, try and get to the mythic age. Get how many units were in that rock? That's got to hurt. Ouchie. Ouch. 
as now the Kamori wandering through here, going to be looking for some sort of a locust here or some sort of a, a pick on these citizens as they're nice and spread out here thus far. Uh, we'll see what he's going to find. Oftentimes raiding with uh, raiding against Atlantean can feel pretty pointless because they can just garrison their units and you can't get many kills. But if you've got stray villages like this one over here, you could possibly take that out as Chrono is definitely searching for that one. There we see a wall attempting to come up here. As Albert Wesker is getting pushed back, the Kamori swinging around. Do they spot the citizen? Just out of range. Oh, that's so sad. So sad, but they will spot the villagers on this location, and Hecate is coming through now for Wesker. No surprises there. This is stock standard Aranus play, and it's stock standard Aranus play for a reason. Because it's really, really strong. This Tartarian gate gets thrown down somewhere, say over here. And then uh, we see an attack over here. The thing that Wesker is not going to be ready for is that this timing is getting pushed back a minute. Uh, and right now, Wesker is full useless units. He is full Terma, which normally you would want to be losing straight away. So you can then transition into, uh, say, more destroyer-based army. More, more, it looks like he's going for Contarius here uh, because of the archer units that Chrono has been making. But Crone's actually already got himself some Kamori here, so it's a bit confusing. We are seeing the Stymphalian bird flying over here, going to take out these Kamori fairly easily here. So we will be seeing the turn. We're going to swing around to drop the Tartarian gate down. Crono's definitely aware of, of Ra strategy here. Ra theory, in a way, is that Ra wants to get Mythic Age against Aranos. This is old theory, uh, in order to in order to get Son of Osiris in order to uh, kill off all the enemy term for free, basically. Uh, and we'll see how it's going to go. As Chrono does get a villager pick there. This is wandering up to the top side. The term up coming forward here. They will spot this town center coming up. Will we see the immediate rain? Chrono? Yes. Big brain Chrono JJ delaying for a minute. He hasn't been able to, he could have actually, if he sold that wood, uh, been able to click up to the Mythic Age. It does take uh, a little while to get there. Uh, but this will give Chrono time to maybe throw up a Siege Works. He should have had a Siege Works up already. So we see the raids onto this location, hitting the villagers uh, here as these villagers, as everything is kind of getting distracted. We've we seen Chrono pulling his villagers fast enough not to lose too many. Now this town center is a bit of a pipe dream here for Chrono as will we see the mythic age coming through anytime soon we see the raiding cavalry coming back but not the raiding cavalry the chariot archers but there are heavy contarius here and contarius are effectively very well and they're a very very close uh, replica of the hippocon in a big way which means when you have heavy contarius heavy contarius be become a very very significant threat to the heroic age army of a raw player over an egyptian player as we see osiris coming through but this town center is getting torn down fortified town center does come through here and we're going to start seeing some repairing getting onto this location third town center is up for chrono you might want to consider a handful of mercenary getting trained here a little known uh, a little dirty word there for chrono jj as he's going to be getting himself um the masons and where is that where is that Tartarian gate going to get thrown down as we do see a shockwave getting dropped here? Still no Tartarian gate here. It's maybe Wesker's forgotten to, to cast it. We are seeing a Contarius now moving into the base here of Chrono JJ looking for somewhere to place said uh, Tartarian gate down. Chrono's really low on, on population here with tons of resources in the bank. Uh, but he does seemingly manage to hold here as Wesker has to pull back. We see the palace coming up over here. Chrono gets onto this gold mine. And it seems to me as if Chrono JJ, after it's, as after all is said and done, has managed to somehow, some way stabilize. But Wesker not casting the Tartarian gate yet. Big question mark on that decision here. As he does manage to have full heavy here. And he's mining all the gold on the map nicely. We are seeing some villagers going to attempt to move up here and sneak this gold mine over here, or at least sneak a side build. Chrono is kind of known for his sneaky play, uh, being one of the one of the few players to be playing Age of Mythology since basically its release. Here, uh, he's basically seen it all, so he knows how good side builds are in this game. He's going to be going for some of them right now, moving up to there uh, as now. 
Seems like Wesker retreating back. See the Camor getting taken out. And Stimpali, they're just going to be able to do so much damage. Krona needs to get upgrades here. Upgrades, upgrades, upgrades. He's going to be able to get his, his Pharaoh back. It might have been picked off at some point. Here's we do see a cheeky raid over here. Uh, but at this point, we've got champion archers in. Still only medium infantry as heavy infantry is coming through. Lonely doing its thing on the back. And the fact is, if you get up to, like, champion archers with a bunch of Arcus, the Son of Osiris stops being so scary because these guys have got 20 range. Son of Osiris only got 18 range. And they can do some serious damage to him. And you see a oh, good micro there from Krono pulling his mummy back. And Wesker has to pull back. 145 of 160 population as... Do we see the Titan Gate? Nope, not yet. Son of Osiris coming through though, as it seems, uh, as it's very natural when you play Arano. It says you forget you have a God Power if you don't get to use it straight away. Like, why not? It's very, very Arano-esque. I don't know, maybe Wesk has got a plan for plan for it for later in the game. As he is pushing through here, going to be taking down some of these villages. I'd like to see it potentially be used over here. In this location, as you do see that that's where the Titan gets going to be used. The villagers, if he wants to take it down, will have to get pulled. Uh, making mercenaries seems to be, uh, tends to be a fairly bad use to try and stop that Tartarian gate. As the son of Osiris coming over here should get rerouted over to deal with those Tartarian spawns, but currently isn't as it's getting pushed forward to try and deal with this onslaught. But Let's get smartly pulling his army here. Potentially that son of Osiris is going to get out of position here. Seems like it's kind of close enough to be in range of the palace. As he does start targeting that one down. And son of Osiris getting taken out. And the town center over here is... Uh, not very happy as Grono is trying to throw up a siege works to try and hold on to this one. This is a pretty brutal Tartarian gate having been placed super late in the game. And the uh, the push forward here is very strong as well. Double fire siphon out. The Son of Osiris is able to take this down very, very fast though. As he is targeting that down with hack damage. It's the Pharaoh pushing forward here for Chrono JJ as well. And we'll see him attempting to empower this one up as now that Ark is able to start targeting down the Son of Osiris. He's starting to get picked off very, very fast. Village really is going to be making their way up to this gold mine over here as well as Chrono JJ is similarly out of gold. And the, the Son of Osiris falling very fast, not paying attention, finally pulling him back in the last seconds. And Wesker manages to overpower Chrono JJ's army as he was not paying attention where that is concerned. Too busy trying to get this siege works up, trying to do something else over here. The Town Center still going down here as Krona's at 100 population. Wesker is still floating 3,000 wood and at 160 population here as the Town Center does end up going down in the end of it all. As all is said and done, a nice push here from Wesker. We'll see how is he going to try and secure that location. Does Wesker know about this top gold mine? He doesn't know about it, but he's going to be searching. He is going to be searching for said gold mine up here as the villagers pulling back. And now it looks like no gold for Chrono JJ here. He's searching desperately, but there's nothing up here. He doesn't see it, but there is nothing up here. And the Arcus, the champion Arcus, will see four villagers just hanging out next to a barracks. <laughs> Alrighty, all for me. As the Towns Ender over here goes down as well as Chrono finally gets himself a catapult out to try and deal with this Tartarian spawn. Uh, not the Tartarian spawn, the Tartarian gate. And the Towns Ender now going up for Wesker as Chrono JJ's main base is the next target on Wesker's list. Wesker also getting himself his uh, champion infantry as well. He has dropped down to 120 resources as uh, this Townsend was actually cheekily taken down. Chrono JJ not not giving up here in this game. He does manage to to find a pretty sneaky wall here and the catapult gets this Townsend down as Wesker is still at 160 population but he's dropped down a mana and a Townsend here as he does manage to get this one back. 
And the Fire Scythe is going to slowly push forward here as we do see the Locust getting dropped over here. And it will put a stop to this town center. Maybe it depends on which way this Locust goes. This Chrono doesn't get lucky there at all. And the town center will end up coming up here. As now the town center getting uh, focused out. <laughs> right clicking onto some farms. Why not? A little bit of extra cheap damage getting done here. And Secrets of the Titans coming through for Albert Wesker to just say, look, I have tons of resources. Let me just show you how many resources I have uh, by clicking up Titan. But, you know, Chrono's never one to give up. He's always got an option here. He can always try and snipe the Titan gate and see how he's going to go here. As the uh, fortified town center is now greeted by yet another fire siphon, but the villagers and priests popping in and out of this town center to try and repair it. You can use, if you click on the town center with the villagers and then, um, and then pop them out by using the G hotkey, the ungarrison hotkey, they will automatically start repairing. A little known fact, or return to whatever task they were doing before. As the villagers come over here, going to be trying to take down the the Arcus with their uh, skin of the rhino, but they are all getting taken down very, very fast. As Double Fire Slife are now hitting the town center, and Chrono going to be dropping down to zero town centers for a, for a period here as he's trying to get his town center back up on this location. But as Titan, Titan Age is going to be coming down, I don't think there's enough time here for Chrono to figure out how to take that Titan down. He doesn't have a sneaky shifting sand. He doesn't have any sort of rock drop. Uh, and even if he does stop the Titan, he's still got a huge amount of units in his base. Chrono's at 50, 50 villagers left. Has a Titan about to be clicked up. Has a lot of resources in the bank. And in that moment, I imagine hands in his head. Chrono does tap out here. <laughs> A really, really nicely played game here by Wesker. A nicely played game by Chrono as well. He just didn't set up against that Tartarian gate at all. Um, he did manage to take a town center down. Had he dealt with the Tartarian gate, not lost this town center, potentially kept his son of Osiris alive for a little longer, this game could have been very, very interesting. But unfortunately, Chrono loses his town center and, and he just kind of crumbles behind the pressure, the, the might that is... Uh, Uranus and Atlantean in general. If you guys enjoyed this game, there is potentially two more from this series. Uh, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next game.